Okay, in today's class we are going to discuss about microprogram optimization. If you recall, we talked about the control unit design. We introduced the notion of what microprogram control is, took an example and designed the various components of a microprogram control unit for implementing that example. Then later on we also talked about a generic microsequencer, what are the type of features a microsequencer should have to be able to support the type of sequencing requirements that come from a, in implementing the control unit. So today what we are going to concentrate on is the control ROM is contains the microprogram, what type of optimizations that can be done in the control ROM. Primarily the two optimizations that are feasible are referred to as vertical optimization and horizontal optimization. It is also called vertical microprogram optimization or horizontal microprogram optimization. As the name suggests, basically the vertical optimization refers to reducing this size of the microprogram control. Basically reducing the number of micro instructions as each word in the ROM is nothing but a micro instruction. So, what vertical optimization would imply is I try to reduce the number of micro instructions that are present in this. At the end of the course, we also will talk of an uh, interesting technique of doing it, but primarily there are some issues involved in doing vertical micro, micro prime optimization, we will discuss that. Then other thing is horizontal optimization refers to reducing this size. So, if this is M and this is N, reducing the number of bits that are present in each micro instruction format. So, that is called the horizontal micro prime optimization. It is also called micro instruction optimization. It is also called redesigning the micro instruction format to reduce its width. Basically, all of them refer to reducing the number of bits that are present in each micro instruction. What are the implications? This will of course reduce, both of them will reduce the size of the ROM. This will reduce the size of the ROM in number of words and this will reduce the size of the ROM in number of bits. Please recollect that this size has nothing at all to do with the size of operations you are performing. It is only the size is generated by for example, M typically represents the number of states that you have. If each state is going to be mapped to a micro instruction, sometimes a state may not be mappable to one micro instruction, but typically this refers to in terms of the equivalent to the state machine, the number of states. This refers to the number of control signals required for controlling the data part as well as the control part. The sum of that is the number of bits that are required to in each micro instruction. Vertical optimization is the issues are a little different, we are not going to discuss it except that to mention that what is it that is involved in it. It is primarily it involves rescheduling or reassignment of control signals to control steps or micro instructions. So, you have a certain assignment of control signals to control steps, you say that you generate these control signals associated with these control steps, but if you make those changes, then you may be able to reduce the number of micro instructions and reduce the vertical size of it. This could also be accomplished sometimes by merging a micro instructions, because if you merge two micro instructions into one, then you can do that, but there are, when can you merge two micro instructions into one? You can only merge if you can, the operations which are present in those two micro instructions can actually be performed concurrently. Not only it can be performed concurrently, you also have fields in the micro instruction format to activate those control signals concurrently. Both these things are required, the capability to perform operations concurrently, capability to activate the control, corresponding control signals concurrently. Both of them if can be done, you can do merging of micro instructions. Sometimes you, this may also require, sometimes you may be able to merge micro instructions by making small changes. For example, we split, remember the GCD example, we split the state where we are doing branching, which has a three-way branch into two two-way branches. So, we actually generated an additional micro instruction because we could only support two-way branches. But if we have a facility to support three-way branches in micro programming, which also we have discussed, then we may be able to merge those two, those two states. So, merging of micro instructions is not typically not easy with the same data path or the same control path, but it, sometimes it may be possible that with some additional, it is very critical that by merging it, 
I can reduce the number of micro instructions and if that is critical I may, may have to make some small changes. Introduce some additional concurrency in my data part. There are timing issues that are involved in it. The major timing issue is of course typically if you reduce the number of micro instructions your programs will also run, your execution will also be faster, your application will also be executed faster. The typical situation because each micro instruction in the model that we have assumed takes one clock cycle to execute. There may be a certain pipeline but basically it takes one clock cycle to execute. So you fetch and then you fetch the micro instruction and then execute the micro instruction and these two are going you know in a locked manner like we were fetching one micro instruction we are executing the previous micro instruction. So when you reduce the number of micro instructions it, it is sort of equivalent to reducing the number of states. So what it implies it is also likely to generate execute the prog uh, micro program fast. So we will not presently go into that because these are involved in typically the type of optimizations we are considering right now is something which is should not involve changing the data path. Given a data path what type of optimizations we can perform. Generally there is very little scope in doing this type of a vertical optimization for a fixed data path. So we concentrate on the horizontal optimization because horizontal optimization is going to reduce the number of bits that are there in the micro instruction and also going to reduce my size and the cost of my control row. So the reducing the width of micro instructions it can be done in two ways. You can do it by compromising on the available concurrency in the data or control part. What it means is you have certain concurrency that is available. You may be you may decide on a micro instruction format. I will explain that in more detail as you take up an example and see this. You can whatever is the concurrency that is available, if you are the format that you have may not be able to exploit all that concurrency. The format may be more restrictive than what your data path supports. The data path supports multiple transfers, but you may have only one field for that transfer. So you may be, uh, be forced to choose among the two transfers only one transfer. So either you can do it with, com with compromise on that or without compromising that. So you both these options are possible and we will see in both cases how your optimization takes place. Primarily how does it work? So you have to generate all your control signals. Once you have decided that this is your, this is your uh, control and this is what you are and this is your data. Once you have decided that this is the set of control signals that are required by the data part and of course there are certain control signals which are required by the control part. I need to generate these two. Sequencer has been designed so I, I need some control signals for the sequencer and I need to generate these two set of control signals from the micro program. So there is no choice of no. So but then how are you going to encode this control signals or the related micro operations in the same field is what we are <coughs> discussing and that is nothing but the encoding of the micro instructions. Encoding of the micro operations. What do you mean by concurrency? Concurrency is if I can perform let us say I have two adders and both these adders can perform one addition. So then they are concurrent. Both these operations are concurrent. Similarly, I can do an addition along with a multiplication or I can do a memory access along with an addition. Any components, let us say I have a counter which can be incremented at the same time there is another adder which can also perform an addition. That means the micro operation which is an increment count can be done together with adding the two register values and storing the result in another register. So both these operations are uh, concurrent. Let me let us say R1, R2, R3 and this is a counter, there is a clock and enable. This enable actually increments it and this is let us say load R3 and this is let us say an ALU where I can select the function. 
So let me also explain. I use these words control signals and I use this word micro operation almost interchangeably, but they are two different things. So now what I mean by concurrent is in this particular data part, let's say I have some other control signal. So I have now the control signals that I have here identified is enable count. This is one control signal, load R3, function select. There are of course clocks that are present here. So now this, if I do a function select here, let's say a subtract function, it will subtract R1 minus R2 and store the result in, so R3 gets R1 minus R2. And my enable count is going to give count is count plus 1. So this micro operation, so this I refer to as a micro operation. To perform this micro operation, I have a related control signal. Now this is a micro operation, but to perform this micro operation, I have to activate these two control signals. I have to set this function select to subtract and I have to make this load R3. If there are some multiplexers at the input, then those multiplexers also have to be selected in a proper manner to root R1 onto the ALU and R2 onto the ALU. So, see typically I refer, interchange them, but please remember that a micro operation is a complete, like it is a complete RTL. It is a register transfer level operation, which has some, it may have some sources, it has some destination, it has some functionality, some transformation of data and all that. Everything is referred to as micro operation. When I talk of control signals, these are the control signals. By themselves, they may not achieve much. If I just say the function select, you make subtract, it may not mean anything because this subtraction is not going to be stored in the register unless I make load R3. But there is a very, once the data path is designed, for each micro operation, there is a very identified set of, and we are also talking of unique set of control signals by which that micro operation is performed. There may be situations where there are alternate paths, we are not considering those data paths here, where there are alternate path, paths available to complete an alternate set of control signals available to perform the same micro operation, then things become a little more complicated. Let's say for one, there is a, we say that there is a one-to-one -one mapping. Once I have a, uh, sorry, one, there is a one-way mapping between the micro operations and the control signals and their values required. It's not just a control signal, it's also a set of values required to perform that particular micro operation. There are some questions from, okay, so that is, so, uh, so we, though of course sometimes we call control signals, we sometimes we refer to as micro operations, but basically, this association should be clear that once this association is there, then one can do. So what we are trying to do is we are trying to encode this multiple micro operations or control signals in the field. So we will design our micro instruction format as a set of fields and each of these fields will control, will be encoded either to perform some micro operations or to encode some of the control signals. So if you encode micro operations if into fields, then you have to decode them to get your control signals. But the mapping is clear that how you can do that. So now let's look at the formats. Horizontal format. So this is of course, please don't confuse this with the horizontal optimization, vertical optimization of the micro program we talked about. Now we are talking of formats for the micro instruction and we talk of a horizontal format. Horizontal format, we have separate bits or field for all control signals. Basically, if you have 10 control signals, you have each of them one bit, then we'll have 10 bit. And so there is a format which is available. There's no loss of concurrency because I have a separate bit for each of the control signals. I can make any of them active concurrently. So there is no loss of concurrency. But the problem with such a format is it has a very large width of the width of micro instruction is very large and the utilization is very low. The utilization comes from the fact that typically the data path may require, you know, even small data paths typically require 30, 40 bits. Large data paths require upward of 200 bits. So when you talk of a, such a large number of bits and let's say in each micro instruction there is a possibility of, let's say even if you talk of something like 80 bits, maybe this 80 bits may be talking of something like 30 to 40 micro operations. So you can activate those 30 micro operations simultaneously. But typically the application program that you have mapped on to application control requirement of the application you have mapped on there may not require more than 5 or 6 micro operations to be done 
in each clock cycle or in each control step. The implication is that out of 30 micro operations that you can do in each control step, only 5 or 6 are being done. So, the utilization is very poor. So, in this case, the utilization is 6 out of 30 is only 20 percent. So, such utilization, poor utilization and so what happens is when you look at the control ROM, of course, as we have discussed, some control signals require a default value of 0 or 1. The default value required is a specified default value and some control signals require a default value of don't care. We know the type of control signals which require this type. of. So, if you look at your control ROM, it may look dense in terms of zeros and ones. There may not be too many don't cares, but it does not mean that you are actually performing these micro operations because many of them may be default values and so you are just increasing your bits. So, it is a fairly poor in terms of utilization, but the advantage that it possesses is it has no loss of concurrency. Whatever can be done in your data part concurrently, you will be able to specify it in the format. You do not lose any concurrency because of formatting by, by the micro instruction format. Let us look at the other extreme. These are extremes and obviously extreme solutions are rarely used. In any design situation, does not matter in any engineering design situation, typically one does not use extreme situations, typically. Mostly you have something. So, these are this is another extreme situation where you do vertical format. The implication here is you only encode one micro operation per micro instruction. Here of course, we cannot say only one control signal because control signal is by itself is meaningless. So, what we say here is only one micro operation per micro instruction. There is a very definite loss of concurrency because you can perform many micro operations together and even if you require them, you have to sequence them. You will not be able to do them together, but this formatting basically implies that you will have to do that in a sequence. Smallest possible width of micro instructions and very high utilization. Typically, it will almost be 100 percent utilization because you are unlikely to have a micro instruction where no micro operation needs to be performed. Okay. So, you would have at least one micro operation to be performed. So, there is a very high utilization. So, every micro instruction is utilized, but then the speed that you get is going to be lower and also you will be losing in terms of the concurrency that is present in your data part is not going to be exploited and you will be typical. For example, a good example of this is at this level, this, your micro instruction starts actually looking like an assembly instruction. If you look, remember or your assembly instructions, the way you wrote it in your MIPS processor or any other processor that you look at the assembly instructions. Many of them, at least for simple process, the assembly instructions consist of you have to do some move, move some register onto another register, you have to, you know, add where you specify there an accumulator or set of three registers. So, they are all simple micro operations. So, you this starts looking more like assembly instructions, the vertical format. And the reason it is called vertical is basically what happens is once you adopt such a micro instruction format, your number of bits are reduced, almost the minimum possible that you can get, but the number of words will be increased and so your program size becomes longer and that is the reason it is called a vertical format. But what is of interest is what is called minimally encoded format and they are of interest and we will also discuss these formats. Minimally encoded format, multiple micro operations per micro instruction. Typically, it is not one, but it is multiple. And here also, we are talking of two different situations where we can may compromise on the concurrency, we may not compromise the concurrency. That is, we may support the complete concurrency or we may not support the complete concurrency. And there are two very interesting options here. You can have architecture driven, you can have application driven. So, you can adopt this minimally encoded format either as an architecture driven or as an application driven and we will see both these. When we say architect, when we say architecture driven or application driven, it is essentially related to the concurrency that needs to be supported. There is a certain concurrency which the architecture supports and there is a certain concurrency which the application requires. So, you can design your format 
in either of the two modes and we will later on see that what is the advantage of doing one or the other or in which situation one does architecture driven concurrency or uh, optimization or application driven optimization. Both of them are optimization uh, problems. So, what we will do is we will take a very very simple uh, data path and talk of the various types of formats that we can have for your macro instruction. This has does not matter what these sources are, there are A, B and C, there are three sources available for this bus. So, this is a bus and on this bus I can enable either A, I can enable B or I can enable C. And then I can transfer these values through this bus, so I can load D, load E, load F. So, I have now set of 6 control signals that are available, enables and loads, 3 enables and 3 loads. What this A and B and C may be registers, it could be peripheral devices, it could be DMA controllers, it does not matter what they are. Okay. So, there are some devices which can drive the bus, source the bus, there are devices which can load from the bus or which are the destination for the bus. So, the simplest format for such a, so please remember this. Uh, diagram. So, there are three sources and three destinations and I have six control signals and in this case as it happens all these signals are only one bit. This is also not necessary. We may have signals which are more than one bit. Typical examples from ALU function select could be two bits, three bits, four bits. It is actually already encoded because the function that you need to perform is given as an encoded input. Similarly, you could have multiplexer select, let us say 4 to 1 multiplexer, it will have 2 bit select as a multiplexer select. Again, it is encoded. It is selecting 1 out of the 4 inputs, but it is encoded in terms of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So, now this 6 bits that you have, a horizontal format will be 6 bits wide, fairly straightforward. I have this enable A, enable B, enable C, enable uh, load D, load E, load F, one bit for each and I can, any micro instruction I want to write, I can write as, I can make the corresponding bits, I want to transfer data from B to E, I can make this 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. So, this will result in device E getting B. This particular micro operation transferring B to E will be a result of such a bit stream. Very easy to generate micro code, directly you can generate the micro code, they, you know very easy to design the format, all your control signals are present, but obviously you can see that this is not going to result in too heavy a utilization because most of the time only 2 bits out of 6 will be utilized for this particular simple case. Let us look at a vertical format. Here I work in terms of the micro operations and I define, so if you consider those three sources and three destinations, so 3 into 3, 9 transfers. Plus 1 no op, because there may be, we are assuming that no, this is part of a larger set of micro operations. I am not talking of a design which just contains this. So, there are 10. So, I may not have to do any transfer on to the, any of the, there may be micro instructions where none of these devices need to be loaded, then that also has to be accounted for. So, the 9 plus 1, 10 micro operations that I need to support. For 10 micro operations, we, I will require, so 4 bits. And I can take these 4 bits and encode them in some manner. I can say 0, 0, 0 is no op, 0, 0, 0, 1 is transfer A to D, 1, 0, 0, 1 is transfer C to F and so on. So, in these 4 bits I will be able to achieve my vertical format. But you can see that what are the issues over here, it is going to be very compact, 
utilization is going to be very high as we have indicated. Almost in every, because the micro instruction itself is only this 4 bits wide and I am defining this 4 bits in this manner, each, in each micro instruction I will be doing one of these micro operations and so it is a very heavy utilization that can, you can get. Yes, so that is the issue, so yes, as they rightly pointed out, my architecture does support a broadcast. A broadcast here implies that I can take this and load the same value in all three, in the same clock cycle. So, such a broadcast is visible in my architecture. So, my architecture do not constrain me. So, this is a concurrency I am saying. The concurrency here is D can get A at the same time E can get A and F can get A. These three micro operations can be done simultaneously. So, they are, these three micro operations are concurrent. So, I had this concurrency and I had this concurrency also supported in my horizontal format. Okay. But when I came to my vertical format, I have not, I am not supporting this concurrency. So, the result is if I actually need to do that broadcast, I have to have three control steps or three micro instructions, one after the other to be able to support those three micro operations. Okay. So, this type of an encoding is going to result. So, what it will do is it will slow down my implementation. If I have too many such equivalent states, too many micro instructions, you know, initially let us say too, my application requires too many such transfers where there is a broadcast or multiple copying of a device onto other devices, I will not be able to, I would have to sequentialize them in my vertical format. So, this is what I am saying, when I say compromise on the concurrency that is available in the data part, this is a concurrency that is actually available in the data part. So, I am going to uh, lose that. So, le now let me look at the minimal encoding. This is the type of encoding which is typically used and let us look at the minimal encoding situation which is architecture dependent. <coughs> If I look at my architecture, it is very clear that I will not be able to enable more than one device. As once I have made a decision to use a bus, I can have only one source for the bus. In the same micro instruction, I may not, I will not have a situation where I can both enable A as well as enable B. So, if you look at it, enable A, enable B and enable C are disjoint, are mutually exclusive from the architecture considerations, from analysis of the architecture can make sure that these signals are disjoint. So, if these signals are disjoint, I can define my micro instruction format, this is called the minimal encoding, using minimum number of bits for the disjoint signals, because there are three set signals, so the number of bits that I require is two, and I can define a field, now I am defining a field called a bus source and I will encode this field as 0, 0 is A, 0, 1 is B, 1, 0 is C. So, instead of using 6 bits, I am only using 5 bits here, not 6 bits. The advantage I am getting is of course, reducing the number of bits by 1 and I, virtually there is no disadvantage. I am not going to slow down my application, I am not going to add to the number of micro instructions because what was encoded in the field are not feasible to be done together. There is no compromise on the concurrency that is present in the data part. So, I can analyze my architecture and I can do that. Yes, there we will come to those issues. And I am only talking of number of micro instructions. There are secondary issues. So, that is a primary issue. There are secondary issues we will consider that. Those could be very, sometimes they could be uh, very important. So, now the other issue is application dependent, it is also minimal encoding, but this type of a minimal encoding is not driven by the architecture, but is driven by the application. When I say application, what I implication is, I, you know, because I want to implement some set of controls. I know that. I have already analyzed whatever, if I am designing something like an ASIC, let us say the GCD example you took. I know what are the type of data transfers or what are the type of micro operations I need to do simultaneously, I know that. I already analyze it. And now I 
once I have done it, now I know what are mutually disjoint. Let us say my particular, the set of control signals I require, does require simultaneous transfer into D and E. Whenever I am transferring data into D, I am also transferring into E. There are times when I am transferring data only into E. There are times when I am transferring data only into F. And there are micro instructions when I don't need to transfer data into any of them. This is a very specific requirement of the set of control signals required. Let us say there is a micro, uh, out of uh, these three, regis, uh, three devices, D, E and F, there is a no op. Let us, none of them is being transferred. There is another control step where I am getting D is getting uh, B, E is also getting B. There is another control step where E is getting C. There is another control step there is, let us say, F is getting A. There could also be a control step where E is getting B. Does not matter. Let us say these are the set of control steps that I have. That is, these are the requirement. This is one state, this is another state, this is another state, or this is one micro instruction, this is another micro instruction, this my, uh, and so on. So, if you look at it, D and E require a simultaneous transfer, but D and F do not require a simultaneous transfer, E and F do not require a simultaneous transfer, and D also does not require an individual transfer. Each time, if this is the all the control signals that I have, these are all the micro instructions that I require, then you can say that whenever I am transferring data into D, I am also transferring into E. But of course, not vice versa. When I am transferring into E, I am not transferring into C, into D. F is also independent. So, I can represent now bus source and bus destination in this manner. I can encode, of course, bus source are encoded in the same situation as before, 00A, 01B, 10C. And bus destination I have encoded as 00NOOP, 01DND, 10E, 11F. And the advantage I get is instead of using 5 bits in the architecture dependent case, I have now only, I require only 4 bits in the application dependent case. And this will always be so. You can never require more bits in the application dependent than architecture dependent. The reason is very simple. Operations which are disjoint, control signals which are disjoint in architecture can never be joint. They have to be mutually exclusive. But this set can be larger. The the signals or the op micro operations which are disjoint can be a superset, can be a larger set than the set of signals which are architecture disjoint. So, I can, of course, this is not a simple problem to solve. If you have to do it optimally, we will consider some of these situations in the next class. But it is easy to see that we can identify the set of control signals or set of micro operations, the way you look at it, and then encode them into fields. Now, I have one field here, one field here. Two fields is what this micro instruction consists of, so that I can reduce the width of this. It is very clear what the advantages and disadvantages of the two are. In this case, because I not compromise on my concurrency that is there in my architecture, if I am going to, for the same architecture, same data part, I am going to develop a separate set of microprograms my micro instruction format will be as good as any. I do not have to again re-optimize my micro instruction format. My micro instruction format will be able to execute that, that set of micro instruction, uh, that uh, new application as fast as this particular data part can support because uh, the concurrency is preserved. Whereas in this case, if I either change my micro program or if I change the application, if I want to write another microprogram for it, because microprogram also you may be adding things to it, you may be supporting more functions on the same data part. So, the concurrency that you are supporting over here may not be suitable for it. You may be have to split micro instructions there in, and perform them in multiple micro instructions, multiple steps, because you are not taken care of the concurrency requirements of this application. So, typically this type of a format is nice when you are actually finally frozen your design. During the development phase, it is better to adopt this type of a format. And once the product is developed and you want to make multiple copies of it and the cost is very critical because the size of the control ROM, you can want to reduce it as much as possible. Then you reapply your optimization 
and try to reduce the bits as much as possible because there is nothing, no change that is going to occur. You have completely tested your design and developed your micro instructions. No further concurrency. Which, concurrency which is not required is not going to be required for when you are doing mass production. And then you go for this type of uh, scheme. Yeah. Yeah. I will come to that in a moment. So all any encoding that you do will require a decoder because. Uh, okay. So now let me talk about what is the cost of this encoding. What is the impact of this encoding on various aspects? And here we will consider this. So impact of encoding is in on two ways. It is in terms of the cost and it's in terms of the performance. In terms of the cost, it's a reduction in the control ROM size is obvious. That's what we are doing all this for. So we will obviously save some bits. But the bits that you save, is imagine a con if let's say you have something like 500, 600 micro instructions, even if you save one bit, it actually means 500 bits because you are going to save all in all the micro instructions. So it is fairly important to be able to save as much as possible because a few bits reduction would also mean a lot of reduction in terms of the area, okay. But the additional cost is in terms of the decoders because any time you do encoding, you require decoders. Actually, it is not even, it's not that every time you require decoding, you require encoders. I will come to uh, this particular, I will clarify this point in a moment, like how does the decoders work. Now, but there is also an issue of performance. Performance issue comes in two ways. Once you do things like vertical micro instruction format, the performance issue is in also in terms of the number of micro instructions that you require, which will in turn affect the number of clock cycles to execute your application. You increase the number of micro instructions, it also means that number of clock cycles that will be required will be. But there could also be an impact on the clock period. After all, the time that you take to execute, we already discussed this, is time for the clock into number of clocks. Remember, there is always this product. So number of micro instructions can change this, but the decoders can also change this T clock. If they can change the T clock, if the decoders happen to be on the critical path. If the critical path is decided by, so the decoders will not always have an influence on the performance. If the critical path is decided by some paths which are present in the data part, then the decoders will not. Where does the decoders come? Now this is a these are the point that, so you have your instra, micro instruction register, which is at the output of your control ROM, and this is your data path. Now the various fields that you have from here will go through various decoders. before they are fed to the data part. Of course, you can assume them either to be part of the control or part of the data. That's not important or sometimes people also call this as an interface between the control and data. That's only an interpretation. But basically, these decoders are sitting at the output of your micro instruction register because you have encoded now number of control signals over here and then you are generating the data part. Here one has to remember because we have interchangeably used the control signals and micro operations but there is a certain encoding. When you talk of micro operations, there is already some encoding. When I talk in terms of micro operations, let us say we said, okay, the increment counter straight away there was only an enable counter signal. But when you talk of that particular adder as a micro, add as a subtract as a micro operation, it's out that particular micro operation is to be decoded and the control signals for function select for loading the register which is at the output of the accumulator and so on needs to be generated. And if that comes from number of micro operation, then you have to OR all of them. So depending upon the situation that you are in, either you talk in terms of, so if you are talking of control signal, then directly if this particular field of your micro instruction has encoded some control signals, those need to be decoded and output needs to be generated. Now depending upon this nature of the control signals, two things can happen. Either you may have to generate a default value. The decoder should be so designed so that it actually generates the default value. 
if the default value is if the no op action let's say if it is an enable register and it's a active high enable then zero has to be generated if it's active low enable then one has to be generated so the decoder has to generate the other point is as i mentioned that if you are only gen actually let us say encoding if let's say a particular field f1 consists of signals only let's say multiplexer select signals it encodes some multiplexer select signals the multiplexer select signals are 1 0 don't care either i want them to be specifically 1 or i want them to be specifically 0 in a particular clock cycle or i don't care what they are when i am actually let us say i take such two signals s1 uh, select s1 and s2 and let's say this is 1 don't 0 and this one is this S1 is required to be this and S2 is required to be this and now they are compatible because either they are same or one is don't care and one and now when I merge it let us say I have only one field F1 assigned which will take both S1 and S2 I don't need any decoding I don't have to see whether it is S1 or S2 I can just write here 1 1 0 don't care 1 as f1 i can just store this particular column in my f1 field and i don't need any decoder i only need a fan out this f1 is going to go to both s1 and s2 so when you actually merge control signals and form fields it's not always you need a decoder but of course if let us say the type of signal that you had before you will need a decoder you encoded the loads you require a decoder you encoded the enables you require a decoder because enable can't be don't care if you are not enabling a particular device onto a bus it has to be disabled well, if something else is enabled this can also there will be conflict on the bus so this is a important point to be noted that not always you need a decoder but if you there are situations many situations you need a decoder and once you need a decoder now the issue is the reason i said this was a secondary issue is many times it is a clock period is decided by the data part the reason is you have components like multipliers or very long 32 bit adders or 16 bit adders where there is a carry chain present even if you look at logic then even then it may be 4 or 6 or 7 gate levels so the clock period is typically decided by the data part but if that is not the case if the clock period is decided by the loop that we have considered before remember the path through the status multiplexer and so on if this is the clock period that we are con which is dominating if this is a critical path in your design and if this design decides the clock period then these decoders can introduce delays this decoder can actually influence the t clock and once it influences the t clock that means your total time for execution is going to be increased so this is so one has to take care of then it may be better that one doesn't have a decoder no because you know now you're not just doing now you are doing a trade off between area and time or cost and you may prefer to have a larger rom where you know you are not encoding signals rather than to have a smaller rom reducing a few bits which will actually let's say the, even this increases 10 percent so their performance will come down by 10 percent if your clock period increases by 10 percent so this is second issue that one needs to bother and this of course is only required when the, this dominates <laughs> and n clock is typically only if you are doing you know if you are doing any type of minimal encoding n clock is not changed if you are doing horizontal encoding n clock is not changed but if you are doing vertical encoding n clock will be changed because typically your after all your you will require some operations to be done concurrently and those have to be sequentialized when you sequentialize them you are performing that two operations in two clock cycles so this number of clocks will change but when you use microprogramming remember one more thing that microprogramming is typically used close to the machine okay so you are actually working you are not working at a assembly level program or a machine like at a higher level you are working close to the machine and speed is generally a consideration 
So one very rarely uses vertical microprogramming, but one uses either horizontal or variation of horizontal which tends towards minimal encoding. But both architecture dependent encoding, minimal encoding or application dependent minimal encoding can be used depending on whether you are doing, this, you know, you are in the debugging phase or whether you are in the production phase. So now the last thing that I will like to discuss is some more complex micro instruction encoding and formats. We are not going into too much detail but I would like you to understand what this means. One type of an encoding is we will see that some optimization techniques we will see for this in the next class but one type of encoding is only single level of encoding that is what we are doing is every field carries a set of micro operations but we can also have multiple level of encoding where what we do is we combine two operations so this is maybe okay m1 operation m2 operation or it could be control signals okay so this wherever I am writing and these two are so you, let us say this is m3 and then I form a field implication is this particular field is two bits wide so 0 0 and 0 1 imply m3 1 0 imply sorry m1 and 1 1 implies m2 now I have to do decoding whether to decode m1 or m2 I have to decode, decode first look at first bit check whether it is and this could be done at a different number of levels you could also have been doing yeah, so you are not just combining a set of micro operations and making your first combining set of micro operations making one field combining that with another set of micro operations and this type of a structure could be two levels three levels four levels deep the impact of this is of course you can reduce the width even see what we need is m1 and m2 should be disjoint m1 m2 itself they should be disjoint with m3 and so on and so forth so you can make such a tree structure and that is there is a reverse decoding tree structure that is required to decode with when you are encoded in this manner but such as recording would also imply that the delay that you have for decoding is longer because you have to look at various bits to be able to finally arrive at. You cannot directly look at the instruction and get this one. Okay, so this is one level of encoding that is possible. Another interesting concept is which was used previously in some of the machines is what is called nano programming. Not very popular now. The name nano comes from the fact that it is at a level lower than microprogramming. Idea is simply this that you have this micro program ROM okay this con and let us say this is very wide but you notice that there are a set of some set of micro operations typically they will be controlling some set of hardware units some set of hardware units and though this may be very long let us say this may be 40 bits long 40 bits will give you the total number of combinations that are possible is 2 raised per 40. But instead of this 2 raised per 40 possible combinations that you can have for this 40 bits, let us say that repeatedly there is only 200 combinations are actually used or they are let us say even they are usable, rest of them do not make sense let us say. You, you out of this because you have 40 bits of control signal and 40 bit of control signals if you have any arbitrary 0 1 patterns that you allow then you can actually have 2 and 2 raised per 40 such patterns or strings but out of that only 200 such make sense because they mean that you are actually activating this data part units in a certain manner to achieve something which is usable. So what you can do is instead of so now you have this 40 bits spread over this let us say the total length is 600. So what you do is there are such 200 patterns. So in this 200 patterns that are feasible and valid patterns, you can actually encode them in how many bits? You will only require 8 bits. So what you do, so you make this microprogram ROM and you have this 8 bit field and use this as an address to what is called a nano, nano memory or nano program memory and this is an 8 bit field and now here you store this is 40 200 by 
40. So these 8 bits are going to address the proper pattern that you require at this micro instruction. And so now what have you done? So instead of this may be very large, okay, I took 600, it can even be larger and this could be l even less than 200. So what you have done is instead of 600 by 40, you have made it 600 by 8, you have saved 600 by 32 bits in each and you are using this as an address to address another memory at another level and which is called the nano memory and you can store the patterns that are required and these are more limited patterns than what you could have stored over here. So now it is basically, if you really look at it, the control signals are being generated at two levels. Instead of generating it at one level in terms of this control ROM, you are generating part of it in the microprogram control ROM and part of it in the nanoprogram control ROM. So machines which have very large word lengths, very large micro number of control signals, many times you need to do this to be able to effectively save your control memory space. There is a delay involved here. The delay is typically involved because you are going to have the access time of this plus access time of this. But the, these delays are sometimes taken care of by pipelining. You put registers so that access times really do not add up, but you have to take the maximum of the access times. But pipelining could introduce, when you are doing branching, it could introduce delays. That's clear, but otherwise you can pipeline these things to reduce them. And it is. Okay, so this is another thing that is done at the microprogram level. And the word nano has no significance, just like micro has no significance except that it's at a smaller level, it's a lower level. It's not to do with this. Okay, we will stop over here.